I mean, the other inconsistency and contradiction, it seems to me, is the reaction of the world when George Floyd was murdered, which was a despicable killing, and the police officer concerned uh, is now serving a life sentence, quite rightly. But that sparked enormous global protests uh, over America, over the UK, everywhere, uh, with people marching in protest at, at what they perceive to be a racist murder of one person. And yet the reaction within hours of what happened here, where, as we knew at the time, nearly a 1,000 people in Israel have been murdered, uh, some in the most utterly horrific circumstances, um, the reaction was that, yes, there were big protests again, but they weren't really protests. They were marches of celebration in America, in uh, the UK. They marched down my local high street uh, celebrating what had happened, pro-Palestinian marches. Uh, I found that extraordinary. Jew hatred is a very real thing. It's a very real thing. Mm. And, and we've obscured it with a lot of talk about Zionism and anti-Zionism, and we've obscured it with a lot of talk about geopolitics and context. But in the end, Jew hatred is quite real. And when you see crowds in Sydney chanting, gas the Jews, not free the occupied territories, not make a peace deal, gas the Jews, I'm not sure what we're supposed to read into that other than people mean what they say when they say gas the Jews. Yeah. I mean, and that's exactly what they mean. I mean, this is, this is Nazi language. I mean, but as you say, the difference between this and the Nazis, the Nazis tried to keep the secret, um, whereas this is all in plain sight. I mean, the idea of people doing this in cities like Sydney and London and New York, it's, it's, uh, it's actually terrifying. And I say that again. I'm an Irish Catholic. I'm not Jewish. Uh, I feel terrified for Jewish people. Like you say, there's only 15 million Jewish people in the world. Uh, it must be when this kind of thing happens in such an indiscriminate manner, it must be genuinely terrifying for people. For sure. And, and obviously, when you see marches of support, it, it, the, the question is always asked, how could the Holocaust have happened? And the answer is this way, <laughs> when people are, are actively in favor of Jews being murdered simply for, for being Jews. And again, it's easy. To, people, people have a, an amazing ability to, to justify whatever it is that they're thinking or feeling at a given time. But if you can find a way to justify yourself out of the, the murder of, of babies in their cribs, mm. I, I, have a, I have a hard time figuring that it's anything other than Jew hatred. And so if, you know, a, as a Jew, as a person who, you know, is very strongly Jewish, I'm very active in my Jewish community, I'm a person with four kids and, and a wife and parents and sisters and, and all of this, you know, obviously Jews feel like they are at risk everywhere because of, of, of this sort of activity. And, and I will say there's an amazing double standard when it comes to anti-Semitism and its treatment in the media. Uh, the way that it seems to work in the media these days is if, a, if, if somebody politically says something about George Soros, then they will be labeled a Nazi. And if somebody actually says, I am a Nazi, then they will say, well, there's probably some sort of justification over territorial disputes. Yeah. I want to end, Ben, uh, on a, a one positive note, and it's a montage we have of support for uh, the Jewish people and for Israel. Let's take a look. So, Ben, that last image was of the Brandenburg Gate, which, of course, we saw back in the 30s with Nazi swastikas all over it. And today the Israel flag is emblazoned uh, across it proudly and supportively. I mean, amid all the Jew hating, and you're right, that's what it is, there's also been an amazing outpouring of support. And that is incredible. And we who are Jews obviously appreciate that. And um, I would just like to say at the very end here that that must be translated into allowing Israel to do what must be done to protect her own citizenry. Because goodwill only goes so far as the actual protection of, of human lives. And uh, if the Jews were to rely on the goodwill of the world over the course of history, it would have gone very poorly for them. Uh, that's why the state of Israel exists. It exists so that never again is never again. And in order for that to be a reality, the, the IDF, the state of Israel, has to be able to defend itself, has to be able to defend its citizenry and protect them from the kind of slaughter and, and savagery that we saw over the weekend. Ben Shapiro, thank you very much indeed for your time today. I appreciate it.